her with some spirit when she comes. Say that she railed, but then I'll tell her plain she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. <laughs> say that she frowned. I'll say that she looks as clear as morning roses newly washed with dew. Say she mute and will not speak a word. Then I'll come into the vault of Billy and say she uttereth piercing eloquence. If she do bid me pack, I'll give her thanks. As though she bid me stay by her a week. If she deny to wed, I'll crave the day when I shall ask the bands and when be married. And here she comes, and now Petruchio speak. Good morning, Kate. So that's your name, I hear. Well, have you heard but something hard of hearing? They call me Catherine, that do speak of me. You lie in faith, for you are called plain Kate, bonny Kate. Sometimes Kate the cursed, but Kate the prettiest Kate in all Christendom. Kate of Kate Hall, my super dainty Kate, for dainties are all Kates. And therefore, Kate, take this of me, Kate of my consolation. Hearing thy mildness, praised in every town, thy virtue spoke of, and thy beauty sounded, yet not so deeply as to thee belongs, myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. Moved? <laughs> In good time, let him that move you hither, remove you hence. I knew at the first you were immovable. Why, what's immovable? <laughs> A joined stool. Well, thou hast hit me. Come, sit down. Woo! Asses were made to bear, and so were you. Women are made to bear, and so are you. No such jade as you, if me you mean. Alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee, for knowing thee to be but young. Too light for such a swain as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. Should be? Should buzz. Ooh, well tain, and like a buzzard. Oh, slow winged turtle, shall a buzzard take thee? Aye, for a turtle, as he takes a buzzard. Come, come, you wasp, in faith, you are too angry. If I be waspish, Best beware my sting. My remedy, then, is to pluck it out. Aye, if the fool could find it where it lies. <laughs> he knows not where a wasp does wear a sting. In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? <laughs> Yours, if you talk of tails. And so, farewell. What, with my tongue and, and my tail? <gasps> no, come again, <laughs> <Kate>. <laughs> St. George, I am too young for you. Yet you are withered. Tis with cares. I care not. Nay, hear you, Kate. In sooth you scape not so. If I chafe you if I tarry, let me go. No, not a whit. I find you passing gentle. <laughs> Twas told me you were rough and coy and sullen. Oh, oh. <laughs> and now I find report a very large. <laughs> Taints thou lures with gentle conference, soft and affable. Why does the world report that Kate doth limp? Oh, slanderous world! <laughs> Kate, like a hazel twig, is straight and slender, and as brown as the hazelnuts, and sweeter than the kernels. Oh, let me see thee walk. Thou dost not halt. Go, fool, and whom thou keep'st command. Did ever dine so become a grove as Kate this chamber with her princely gait? 
I'll be thou die, and let her be Kate, and then let Kate be chaste and, and die in sportful. Where did you study all this goodly speech? Yeah, it is extempore from my mother wit. <laughs> A witty mother, witless else her son. <laughs> Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Mary, so I mean, sweet Catherine, and thy bed. And therefore, setting all this chat aside, thus in plain terms, your father hath consented that you shall be my wife, your dowry agreed on. And will you, nil you, I will marry you. Now, Kate, I am a husband for your turn, for by this life whereby I see thy beauty, thy beauty that doth make me like thee well, thou must be married to no man but me. For I am he, and born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate conformable as other household case. Well, here comes your father. Never make denial. I must and will have Catherine for my wife. <laughs> Just to sit down and just read it. You, you can't just, just read can't, can't. this scene, you know. This read is such a physical right? thing. And we were like, well, let's try and yank each other, you know, <laughs> and, and have your hair. And, so we, you know, we did our best. <laughs> Thank you. Shropshire, a place I've always longed to go, and now I have friends who live there, you know, on Facebook, 
so I can look at their pictures and <laughs> wish myself there. So that's kind of what this section about. <laughs> Caroline stared out the window all that day. They're in a carriage, not speaking, right into his house. <clears throat> Caroline stared out of the window all that day, except when she was sleeping. She tried to put her handsome husband and his touch from her mind. She was almost successful. Anthony assisted her by not speaking or touching so much as her gloved hand. She was not distracted as they came into Shropshire, the land of beautiful rolling hills. There were no moors filled with heather and emptiness where the winds moaned like specters of the dead. Every neat field was surrounded by copses of trees, lovely maples and birches, as well as oaks and hawthorn. The carriage rolled with the hills as with the swells of the sea. Caroline had never been on a ship, but she hungered for the sight of the ocean, the great swells that would carry her to far, undiscovered countries, where people had never heard a word of English spoken, or to the wilds of Byzantium, where the great domes and marbled streets led from one delight to another, to Venice, where the very roads were made of water, where the air was filled with spices. Caroline knew she was foolish to think of such things. Like all women of her station, she would live out her life in her husband's house, raising his children and keeping his home. She would go to London for the season, for fittings and for balls. She would walk in the staid park of Regent Square and take in the River Thames. London was as close as she was ever likely to get to the places she had read about in her father's library. Caroline cast one sur surreptitious glance at her husband and wondered for the first time if he loved books, too. She dreamt of riding Hercules out among the fallow fields once the harvest was brought in. She could ride for days and never be seen again. She could ride as far as London and beyond if she chose. The thought of getting Hercules, her stallion, onto a ship and keeping him there for as long as it would take to journey to Venice burst the bubble of her dreaming. She could take her horse nowhere. She was a countess, a wife, and would someday be a mother. She must put away such indulgent longings. Caroline Montague. <laughs> Some of you have brought your books in, and I'll be happy to sign those.